Hey, what's up guys? Sloth King here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to add an external transmission cooler on your vehicle. I'm going to be doing it on my uh, 2008 V6 Toyota 4Runner. Uh, the way that I'm going to be doing it, it will apply to pretty much any single vehicle out there if you want to add an external transmission cooler. So the reason why I'm doing it is because the V6 never came with an external transmission cooler, only the V8s did. I do plan on towing in the future and doing some other stuff, so I just want that added cooling protection. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Let me show you what we're gonna need and let's jump right into the video. All right, let's start with the basics. First thing you're gonna need, some kind of drain pan to catch any excess uh, transmission fluid. You definitely want some gloves, some rags, a socket set of some sort. You will need some kind of pliers to pull off the hoses and any clamps. You will need a torque wrench whenever you're tightening your drain bolts and or fill plugs. You will need your transmission fluid. In this case, I'm using the uh, WS transmission fluid for Toyota. Uh, this is Eisen, which is an OEM brand for Toyota. Uh, for the 4Runner, you will need I forget the, the type of Allen key on it. Uh, when I get to it, uh, I'll show you guys. This is just for the check fluid level since my transmission is sealed. Uh, a funnel, and then you're gonna need your cooler. Mine is a Hayden transmission cooler. I will link this below. Uh, from what I remember, I got it off of Rock Auto, and this, this is a kit. So it comes with four and a half feet of uh, hose, which in the Forerunner's application, you will need uh, an additional four and a half feet. And the cooler comes with uh, some mounting hardware and some extra clamps. The worm clamps, I'm not a big fan of. I prefer the, um, the clamps that Toyota uses that you need uh, pliers to grab onto and then release. Those ones are better, but these will definitely get the job done. And I forgot to mention, you will need some brake parts cleaner just to clean up any fluid that you spill. So yeah, that's the overview. Um, everything that I use in this video, I will link below, except for uh, if you guys are doing it on a different vehicle, don't buy the, uh, the WS transmission fluid if it's not for Toyota stuff. Anyway, all right, let's talk about the routing that we're going to do for this transmission cooler. So we're going to locate it right up front. And if you look on your radiator, you're going to see a feed line. And then the bottom one is a return line. So we're still going to use a stock circuit in, in, in this case, like the in and out of the radiator, because that has an external transmission cooler in it already. And what that does, if it's cold out, it warms up your transmission fluid, which is vital. You want it at a certain temp. And two, whenever we're adding uh, an external cooler, uh, we're going to keep this in line. It's one going to act like a secondary uh, cooler and two it's going to keep our fluid warm in the winter time and it's just going to act like another radiator or cooler so to say it's still a radiator so we're going to keep the inlet line into our radiator our outlet line will come out into our inlet of our cooler and then our outlet of the cooler is going to go to our return line on the bottom of the hardline pipe down here. It will make sense. I'll throw up a diagram. That way you can see exactly how it's supposed to be routed. So yeah, it's pretty simple when we do it. A lot of people don't do this, but this is actually how you're supposed to route an external auxiliary cooler. So let's get into this. All right, so we are underneath the Forerunner. I have my skid plate off. And you will notice a couple hard lines over here. For your vehicle, you're gonna have to find out where your inlet and outlet lines are for your transmission. But this one right here is pretty simple. All right, so this one is going to be the inlet and this one is going to be the outlet. So we're going to remove our outlet right here. And I've got my drain pan all ready to collect any kind of fluid that comes out of here. So let's go ahead and pop this off. Completely missed the mark on that. Wow. All right, now that's disconnected, let's go into the engine bay. All right, now 
off of your transmission cooler, take one of these caps off. This is gonna be beneficial because whenever we take off this bottom line, we're just going to cap the, uh, the port on it. That way, not a whole lot of transmission fluid leaks out all over the place, making a mess. So next, we're going to take off this bottom hose. So it's gonna be a little tricky, but let's go ahead and take that off. Got that on, got this hose out. All right, next we're going to attach our hose to the outlet of that port that we just took off on the radiator. So let's go ahead and put that on there and route it to the front of the vehicle. There we go. All right, so I have the hose routed on this bottom hole right here, and it's not at a sharp angle at all, so we're not gonna worry about the hose getting kinked up or anything like that. Ideally, we're going to probably get some foam. I didn't think of this until now. Get some foam or get some like uh, high heat like tape or some hose wrapping and go ahead and wrap it around it so that way it doesn't uh, rub up against the metal here and then wear away at the hose. But we have it routed right here, and this is going to go to the top of our cooler, and then we're gonna have the bottom line routed right through here. So let's go ahead and, and mock up the cooler and see where we're going to actually put it. All right, so with the cooler, I think having it right about there would be fine. Now, these little zip ties that come in here, this is uh, this will allow it to go through the condenser, go through the radiator, and you can just tie it down without having any external mounting brackets. So let me go ahead and I'm just going to put two of them through here, but I'm not going to tighten it down. And then I'm going to put the hose on to see what the clearance is on the top part of our hose. All right, so I have it mocked up. This actually looks like it's in a pretty solid space. Uh, the hose is going to be ran right like that, something like that. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. And if you look on this back side, we don't necessarily have to take off our shroud. You can see uh, it's pretty much like a giant cool zip tie. Uh, we can put the backing on it and then we can go ahead and reach some pliers in here and cut it flush. That way the fan doesn't, you know, hit it like a bunch. You don't necessarily have to take off the uh, the fan shroud, at least uh, not right now. Hopefully we don't have to, that'd be a pain. But um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just mock it up, throw it in there. All right, now that we know where we want our cooler, the kit comes with these foam pads that you put on to the back of this cooler so it doesn't rub up against your condenser. So let's go ahead and pop these on and move forward. All right, and it should look something like this. All right, before we tighten that down, let's go ahead and measure our length of the hose, and then let's go ahead and cut it and then clamp it on. All right, and when placing these clamps on, make sure you place it in a way that the screw or the fitting is facing you. That way it's easier to take on and off.
Ah, there we go. Uh, it's gonna be fun to take off in the future if I need to. All right, next we're going to attach our secondary hose to the outlet of the cooler, and then we're going to plumb it through this side and then connect it to the hard line of the transmission lines. So let's go ahead and start this. All right, now that we have it routed, let's make sure we have enough slack on this side. So I'm just gonna leave myself extra because you can always trim, you can't add any more on. So I'm gonna leave about that much hanging off. That way I can connect it like that, get it up and out of the way. So let's go ahead and trim the hose down there and then finish it off. That looks pretty good right about there. So I'm gonna cut there. All right, we got the lines connected. I tighten this down. Last thing to do for the cooler, we need to go ahead and put our caps on, which if you peek over here, you can see the, the ends sticking out. So that's great. We can go ahead and slide those on and then get a pair of cutters and then just cut them to where the point, like cut these ends right here. So that way it's not hitting the fan. So it's gonna be kind of hard to film that, but I'm gonna do my best. And actually in my case right now, going under the vehicle is a bit easier, at least for the bottom ones. All right, let's see if those make contact now. Oh, that's good. I didn't have to cut them all the way short, but yeah, that's good. All right. Yeah, that's secured. That's not going anywhere. All right, and all the hard stuff is now done. I am covered in sweat. It's super hot today. It sucks. And the last thing that you guys need to do is just add extra transmission fluid to your vehicle just to compensate for the extra lines that you ran and the cooler. Now with the 4Runner, uh, there's a special procedure that you have to do where you have to bring the temperature of the transmission up to a certain point, like 97 degrees, and then you undo this, um, it's pretty much like a leveling um, kind of drain plug. And once it gets to a trickle, that's when you know the transmission's at the correct level. But some people still have regular dipsticks in their transmission. So yeah. So you Toyota guys uh, that need to follow that procedure, I actually made a video on it, so check it out up here. I'm not gonna do that in this video on camera. I'm just gonna do it off camera. And then, yeah, that's about it. You guys are done at this point after you do that. And then afterwards, since we're all done here, we can go ahead and clean up our lines. Now, I recommend getting some foam, putting in between here, and then zip tying the lines together. Same with over here, that way don't, they don't rub on the body, on the metal. I'm gonna go pick some foam up. I will actually link that below. Whatever foam I get, I'll link it below. And then I'll show you the final product. Uh, probably just a picture or whatever. So the most important thing to do now 
is to start up the vehicle to see if any of your lines are leaking. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Perfect, nothing's leaking. If it was going to leak, it would have started leaking right then and there. So yeah, now that we have zero leaks, you can go ahead and take your brake parts cleaner, go ahead and clean up any of the fluid that you uh, spilled or anything like that. All right, and that's it. Now that I'm all done, everything's golden. Nothing's leaking. Hopefully this video helped you guys out on how to properly install an external transmission cooler. If it did, I'll catch you guys on the next ride.